right, it was said that Tavis Smiley had abused his power as boss, okay, by carrying on numerous sexual relationships with female colleagues, not sexual harassment, not rape or anything like that. And he ain't taking this shit too well. And if I were him, I wouldn't either, okay? Hi, I'm Tavis. I was as shocked as you were to hear of PBS's sudden announcement regarding my television program. Let me say at the outset that I have the utmost respect for all women. And I certainly celebrate the courage of those women who've come forth of late to share their own truth. But let me also assure you that I have never groped, inappropriately exposed myself, or coerced any colleague in the workplace ever in my 30 year career. PBS launched this so-called investigation of me without ever even telling me about it. I only learned of this investigation because former colleagues, former staffers, started to call me to tell me they were getting a phone call from some PBS investigator asking, number one, did Tavis ever make you feel uncomfortable in the workplace? And number two, can you give us other persons to call? Only after threatening a lawsuit did PBS investigators agree to sit down and talk to me for three hours. And even then, their minds must have been made up because almost immediately after that session ended, this story broke in variety. PBS investigators refused to look at any of my documentation, refused to talk to any of my current staffers, refused to give me the names of any of my accusers, and refused to give me any semblance of due process. It is clear that this has gone too far, and I, for one, intend to fight back. PBS overreacted, and they launched a sloppy investigation. It's time for a real conversation in this country about where the lines are about how men and women can engage each other in the workplace. And I look forward to actively participating in that conversation. Now I gotta admit, when I first heard that statement that Tavis Smiley said, it sounded very similar to the statement that Russell Simmons gave, but these two men are nothing alike, okay? I wanna point that out and make it extremely clear in my opinion, okay? This is not the courthouse, okay? I am not a judge in this matter. How Ever, okay, I do understand Tavis Smiley frustration. PBS has issued a statement saying that Tavis abused his power and the colleagues that had sexual relationships with Tavis Smiley were afraid that if they didn't continue to sleep with Tavis Smiley, that they would lose their job. Now I must say, after reviewing, after listening to Tavis Smiley's statement, I kind of feel sorry for him in some aspects, but at the same time, I don't, okay? Because this is not what like Harvey Weinstein or Russell Simmons has done, okay? This is completely different, okay? These are two consensual adults, okay, that happen to work together, he's the boss, and of course they're everybody that works with Tavis is underneath him, but nevertheless, two consensual adults carried on a sexual relationship, but throughout the relationship, the other party felt as if they were to sever ties, they would probably lose their job. So when they lost interest in screwing Tavis Smiley, they felt that they were going to get fired, and in most cases, and this is where Tavis is kinda in between a rock and in a soft space. I can understand how anybody can feel that way when you are screwing someone who's in charge of you, okay? Because you just never know when you're dealing with emotions if this person will wanna continue working with you if you're not in a relationship with them, okay? And so in PBS's defense, by launching an investigation and choosing to terminate him based off of him abusing his power as boss, I can understand why they made the decision to suspend Tavis Smith based on those allegations because he should have known better and should have known that anybody that he's sleeping with and he's their boss would probably be intimidated by him. And I mean, Tavis Smiley is a very intelligent, aggressive, intimidating human being, but that's not a bad thing. But I can understand if I'm screwing him and we're sitting in a boardroom, I'm just saying, now, although I've never done this before, okay? You know, screwed my boss, okay? I don't believe in those things. I would rather screw 
screw somebody on the same level. And hell, my husband and I met at work and we were, you know, on the same level. I'm just saying in the workplace because it can end ugly. I've seen, I've seen relationships. I've seen women screw their bosses. And at the end of the day, it's just a real screwed up situation to be in because on one hand, okay, you screwing the boss kind of puts you in a position where you feel as if you have some entitlement. And then the employees around you, okay, kind of feel and see favoritism because his actions towards you are very different from others. And so if I were these women and I happened to be screwing a boss and we were all in a meeting and we all know that Tavis Smiley is the boss. He is the founder of the company and in rooms like that, okay, when there's a lot of money on the table, things can get heated and if you happen to be screwing him and you suggest an idea and he shoots it down in front of everybody in the middle of a meeting and then of course she's hearing from colleagues that she's screwing you and then you shoot her down in front of all of her colleagues because she expects to have just a little favoritism since she's getting on her knees for you and then in return she's got you sucking and slurping down there and shit I can see not understand but I can see where these women kind of felt a little bit intimidated and in most cases scared to break things off with their boss because they felt like there were going to be further retaliations coming from him, okay? And so at the end of the day, PBS is just saying that Tevis Smiley should have known better, but this is where he's in between a rock and a soft space. When your whole life revolves around work, 98% of the time, you are going to end up meeting your spouse at work. And this is in his defense. People meet at work all the time because in most cases, you meet people and fall in love with people that you have things in common with, okay? I kind of understand where PBS is able, okay, to fire him based on that clause, but at the same time, it's kind of like, uh, they're painting him out to be a Harvey Weinstein, and that's just not the case, okay, with Tavis Smiley. And I don't think Tavis Smiley should have known more better than the women, because at the end of the day, he is a damn human, okay? And so this goes out to any man out there who feels comfortable enough to screw their employees just know that there will be a place in time in that consensual relationship that this woman is going to feel some type of entitlement okay she's gonna want some type of favoritism and when you don't show her that favoritism and she starts to develop a little bit of resentment towards you in the consensual sexual relationship that you're in just know that it is gonna cross her mind that she may get fired or maybe transferred or intimidated or pushed out by other employees who knows okay because you know when employees and your co-workers start rumors that shit can make somebody want to leave too and so when you decide as a boss to sleep with your employee just know that there's gonna come a time and place where you and you only are gonna take the biggest fall okay because at the end of the day they can go get another job and everything that you built okay especially men like Tavis smiley he spent 30 years really building a strong career in journalism and he's one of the journalists that i do respect i've always watched have a smiley i've always kind of been in agreement with his views because you know he's not just one-sided in his conversation and so at the end of the day i just think honestly it was kind of one of those situations you know this is your company you do make the rules you oversee everything but at the same time you can't see and foresee everything okay and i honestly think that that's what these women who are refusing to disclose their name and what happened and I'm sure he knows who they are because other folk in the workplace will understand the type of individual that they are because there are women too and I know a lot of women are probably gonna get mad at me for saying this shit here but it has to be said there are a lot of women who strategically fuck their boss for a come up and when they don't get a come up and when they want to break things off all of a sudden they felt as if they were gonna get fired okay or they felt violated and shit like that and so you know the conversation just needs to be damn had and I'm not afraid to have it you know it just happened with Nelly just in case you guys don't know this is breaking news and I will be following up on this story Nelly was accused of rape on a tour bus and I gave y'all my thoughts on that about a month ago on whether or not he raped that girl because I just don't understand how a conversation about a condom came up in the middle of rape you understand what I'm saying there was one woman and I mean and I'm gonna say this in in Russell uh, Simmons defense there was one story that I just 
read that I just do not believe, okay? I believe the, the I'm not gonna say her name, but this is what she said, okay? She said that she met with Russell Simmons, I believe it was sometime in the 80s, okay, at a hotel, and he raped her. And then after he raped her, okay, she decided to meet with him again the following year at a hotel, and he chased her down, grabbed her by her hair, and raped her again. Now, Common sense would tell anybody, especially my 10 year old daughter, because hell, when I read the story about this accuser, I decided to have a conversation with my daughter. I said, hey, and she 10 years old, 10 years old. I said, baby, if somebody rapes you, okay, would you meet with them again at a hotel the next year? No, no, absolutely not, mommy. Exactly, okay? So listen, there's a lot of bullshit that's being fed out here simply because women know that they can get away with the shit, but at the end of the day, when you start seeing them slap back with these lawsuits, okay? Like Tavis Smiley and Nelly are doing. And this is just only in Russell Simmons' defense once. All the other stories are... Mm -hmm. Okay, I just think that it's safe to say that we can't assume that all of these women are right all the time. Now I gotta go. <laughs> now, before I go, I am drinking the Polo Creek Sauvignon Blanc. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it's very light, crisp, okay? You taste some grapefruit on the palate along with other tropical fruit flavors. And I forgot to mention something about this wine in my last two videos. I did mention that this was a gold medal winner, okay? But I didn't tell you why this particular winemaker won the gold medal. This is an organically grown wine, okay, with no pesticides. And it prices at $5.99, which is a great deal. I'm drinking the Sauvignon. Blanc, they have a Malbec, they have a Merlot, they have a Chardonnay, they have a whole line of affordable wines and this honestly is my favorite one and I decided to share it with you all today, okay? And like I said, I paid $5.99, okay, for this organic, fresh-ass wine. Mm -hmm. And of course, I will leave the link below so that you can purchase it for yourself, okay? compliments anything healthy per se, like your salads and your greens, seafood of course as well, okay? Thank you all so much for watching. If you like the video, subscribe. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat at Unwind with Tasha K. And hell, if you didn't like this video, you can still subscribe just so you can cuss my ass out. Not that I'm gonna really give a damn anyway. Now I gotta go. Bye.